Okay, we have here an interesting integral from the UNSW CPMS integration B2023. This one's problem eight. We have the integral from zero to one half x squared plus three over x cubed minus six x plus 11 x minus six dx. Okay, my first thought is we're really gonna need to factor something. The question is, is this denominator factorable? And there's something about six and 11 that seems kind of suspicious. And one thing to notice is if you just add up all the coefficients going across here, you get zero. That tells me that one would be a zero of this polynomial. So to start with, I can factor out an x minus one from this thing. And then by doing that, the other term is just gonna be x squared minus five x plus six. But this here is easily factorable as x minus two times x minus three. So it turns out that our denominator can just be written as x minus one times x minus two times x minus three. So let's just rewrite this. And now that we have it rewritten in this form, now we're in good shape to use partial fractions on this. And so from here, it turns out this is a pretty convenient case for partial fractions just because every term is linear. So we can just have constant terms, a, b, and c that we need to find. And what I'm gonna do on this is just use the cover up method. So to start with for like x minus one, if I plug a one in there, that's gonna give me a zero. We don't wanna do that, so we cover up that term. But I just need to plug in one everywhere else and into the numerator. So when I do that, let's just do this carefully. When I plug in one squared plus three, that's gonna give me four in the numerator. One in here is gonna give me minus one. One in here is gonna give me minus two. But then just simplifying this and dividing four by two gives me two, and that's my a value. Okay, doing the same thing with our second term here. If I plug a two in here and cover that up, plug a two in everywhere else, this is gonna be for our b value. So in the numerator, we're gonna have two squared plus three, which is four plus three or seven. Plugging a two in here is just a one. Then plugging a two in here is a minus one. Dividing that up just gives me minus seven and that's gonna be my B value. Then last, I just need to plug in three here, cover this up and plug my three in everywhere else. So in the numerator, we end up with three squared nine plus three is 12. Three minus one gives me a two. Three minus two is just a one. 12 divided by two, six, and that's my C value. So now that we have these constant values here, I'm just gonna take all this, put it back into the integral, and we'll continue from there. Now at this point, we have our A, B, and C value that we found on the previous board. And what I did is I actually split this into three separate integrals, so we'll integrate these separately. So first, we're gonna have just bring the two out front. We can bring these constants outside of the integral. So this is gonna be two, natural log, absolute value, x minus one. Then for the next one, we're gonna have minus seven, natural log, absolute value, x minus two. I'm gonna evaluate them all at once because we've got the same bounds. So then the last one is just gonna be six, absolute value, x minus three, and we're evaluating all this from zero to one half. And then actually the evaluation here is probably the most tedious part. So just plugging in one half first, we're gonna have natural log minus one half, but inside the absolute value, I'm gonna write this as minus, I'm gonna write this as just one half, minus seven, natural log, here this is gonna be minus three halves, Again, absolute value is gonna take care of all the negative signs. And then same thing here, this is gonna become minus five halves. I'll just write it as five halves. The next we're gonna have a minus sign on all these that's gonna change the sign. So I plug a zero in here, natural log minus one, absolute value becomes natural log of one, but that's just zero, so I'm gonna leave that term off. This next term, I'm gonna use the minus to change the sign on this seven to a plus seven. Zero in here, natural log minus two gives me natural log of two. And then minus will change the sign on this six. Plug a zero in here, natural log negative three. So this is gonna become natural log three. And then to finish this off, there's a bunch of ways we could simplify this. But for me, the way I like to do it, I just noticed there's a lot of twos going on. There's a couple threes, and then there's like a five. So I wanna kind of group these together. So for natural log one half, I can actually take a minus out of this because this is like two to the negative one. So I can write this as minus two ln two. This I can write as minus seven ln three. Splitting this up and writing this as like a minus ln two, I can write this as plus seven ln two here. This one I can write this as plus six ln five minus, same thing I'm doing here, minus six ln two, plus seven ln two, and then we'll have our minus six ln three. Then I'm just gonna group all my ln twos. Okay, so that's gonna give me, this is seven minus six is one, plus seven is eight minus two, so I'm gonna have six ln two right here. And then I only have one ln five, so I'm gonna write this plus six ln five. And then for ln threes, I just have this one and this one. So I have minus seven, minus six, so I have minus 13 ln three. 
But now in this one here, I can actually factor a six out of this and write this as six ln two plus ln five. But then by the property of logs, I can actually multiply what's inside. So I can write this as six ln 10 minus 13 ln three. I think that's about as simple as I'm gonna get it. So we'll just circle it and call it good. So good problem, but like you can see, it got a little tedious here at the end. So we'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.